All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Van Build series. You're here looking for a bed, so let's dive in. Let me show you how to build a super easy, comfortable bed for your van. This was probably one of the simplest parts of the build for me, and hopefully it'll be simple for you as well. So your bills are mounting, the housing market keeps climbing, and you're one sick day away from becoming homeless. So you think to yourself, I'll buy a van. That'll solve all my problems, right? Wrong. But if you're going to live in a van, you might as well have yourself a comfy bed. That's why this episode is going to be all about the bed, baby. <laughs> Where the magic happens. Or in your case, probably doesn't happen because you're now the creepy person who lives in a van. If you're currently in the process of building out your own van, you're likely at that crossroads where you have a modicum of experience and plenty of confidence. But don't worry, any remaining confidence you have will be gone by the time you finish your van build. So I built this swanky bed that you see right here behind me. Originally, I wanted a king size mattress, but after measuring it out, it just didn't really make sense. I measured out a queen and I felt that I could get bigger than that. So I kind of compromised right in the middle of a king and a queen. I'm not exactly sure what to call this bed size. Maybe I'll call it a transgender king. So I was really excited to add a bed to my van. Most people spend about one third of their life in bed. So it's an important area to invest in. Personally, however, I spend about one half my life in bed. So it's that much more important to me. Let's jump into the building process. When I was planning my bed build, I wanted it strong enough on the sides to support the entire weight of the bed. I didn't want to have to put any support beams underneath the bed, kind of like in the middle of the floor. I wanted a nice big empty space there and I don't really know why I wanted that space. I just, I guess I like the aesthetic or the ability to put a freaking kayak in here if I want to. So I started off with the sides. I took some two by sixes and blasted enough screws into that thing to fill a season of Love Island. I used two and a half inch metal screws here. And for reference, each one of those two by sixes got probably 15 metal screws in it. After I got those secured to the wall, I needed some sort of beam going from one side to the other. So what I did was I grabbed some two by fours, I measured the length that I needed, I lopped off the edges and I set them in some joist hangers. So my original goal was to have my van bed reach all the way to the back doors, but with the two by sixes being the main source of support, they kind of left me hanging by about eight inches from the edge there. There's an obvious joke there. I'm not going to make it though. Since my two by sixes didn't reach all the way to the back door, I ended up building a little extension frame out of two by fours. So all I needed was some more two by fours. I needed some more screws, a couple more joist hangers, and then, um, I needed those metal sheets. They're like rectangular metal sheets with the holes in them. I can't remember what those are called right now, so I'm just gonna make my mouth look like I'm talking and then add it in the editing process. Simpson tie plate. I wasn't really sure how strong this little extension was gonna be as it's not even connected to the walls directly, but it honestly feels like the strongest part of the bed. The extension actually backs right up to the back door. It's like a perfect fit. So perfect that you actually can't <laughs> open the back door from the inside anymore because I put the frame right up against the handle. But honestly, the bed's so high up that I couldn't really reach down there to the handle anyway. Thus far, it hasn't really been a big deal. I don't, I don't really, I don't really miss it. At this point in the bed build, we're on the home stretch. We just need to add some slats to those cross beams. So I went to Home Depot, I grabbed a bunch of pieces of one by three common board and I cut them down to size. These one by threes from Home Depot were dirt cheap. So I just grabbed a couple extra in case my mouth was off and I ended up not needing them, but they're like a dollar something a piece. So I'll find a use for them somewhere. <laughs> You're gonna wanna space them three to four inches apart. So real quick, I've seen a lot of people using plywood on top of the cross beams instead of slats. This is sort of an easy way to finish your bed quickly, but it's not the best way. So that plywood's gonna support your mattress, but it's gonna trap air. It's not gonna let air circulate through your mattress. So as that mattress gets a little damp from your sweat or from humidity or whatever, it's gonna get trapped in between the mattress and the wood and it's gonna get gross. That's why with the slats spaced about three or four inches apart, they're spaced apart enough to allow good airflow, but not so much that the strength of the bed is compromised at all. Once your slats are installed, all you're gonna to need to do is throw that mattress on top of there and break that bad Larry in. Since I built a weird custom sized bed, I had to cut my mattress down to size. So I tried to open my mattress up and I was greeted by a childproof zipper that actually gave me some problems. It's basically like a broken zipper. If I can show you on, on this thing, it's basically this part with this extension piece like broken off. So you just have this little part that actually sits on the, on the zips. I don't know what you, what you call those, the teeth maybe. 
So all you need to do to, if you try to just grab that thing and move it with your hands, it's like locked on there. But if you just slide like a paper clip or a safety pin through there, you'll be able to zip and unzip it, no problem. So once I got that thing unzipped and pulled back, I started sawing away at the foam with a bread knife. For the uninitiated, a bread knife is a type of knife that was invented for the specific purpose of cutting bread. Now you're probably sitting there thinking, but bread is so soft, it seems like any knife could cut it. And you would think so, but not any knife can do this job. This is a job for the bread knife. Pretty sure they bake these new foam mattresses the same way they bake bread anyway, which would explain why the bread knife is designed to cut these mattresses. So go raid your grandma's kitchen, break out her antique bread knife set, and start sawing away at your mattress like you're competing for $50 in the lumberjack games. I don't know what weird chemicals are in your discount foam mattress you ordered, so you might want to dress up in your old quarantine costume before you start hacking away at your mattress. If you're attempting to perform this procedure on a spring mattress, definitely consult your local spring mattress cutting professionals before beginning. I don't have any experience there, and so I can't make any recommendations beyond that. Ta-da! Congratulations, guys. You now have a bed installed in your van. You can now get an okay night's sleep on your travels. That's going to conclude this video today, guys. If you know anyone who sleeps in a bed, go ahead and share this video with them. Subscribe or hit a notification bell or a thumbs up or mean comment, something, something, something. Catch you next time. Deuces. 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 Oh. Actually, it's a... Oh, it's about time for me to go on to bed. But I knew that I got... So, ideally, my van... So, ideally... Since... Since I built... Oh... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> since I built a... Is a kite?